Hey guys, how are you all? My name is Harshi Devi friends and as you have seen from the title, in this video we are going to talk about estuary ecosystem. Now before starting with this estuary ecosystem, I will like to tell you two things friends. First of all, this video is in English. If you want to watch the Hindi version of the video, the link of that is given in the description box below. Also, if you want to follow me on Instagram friends, the link of that is also given below. So what are basically estuaries friends? Estuaries are those points or those zones where the river is meeting the sea. In this figure, you can see, friends, that this is basically the sea and this is basically this estuary. And here, through this point, basically, you can see that this sea is made, meeting a particular water body from inside. Basically, this whole region will come under estuary. And in the very next video, we'll see that this becomes basically the mouth of the estuary because at this point, the sea is being connected to the land. So here I am going to tell you one very important factor about estuary. If basically this is estuary friends and here it is meeting the ocean and here it is meeting the river. So basically the point at which this estuary is meeting the ocean that will be known as the mouth of the estuary. And the point at which this estuary is meeting the river, this will be known as the head of the estuary. So now I think that you are clear about the mouth and head of the estuary. The range of salinity in estuary will vary from 0 to 35 ppt. Obviously, you can see that the oceanic water and the fresh water are mixing. And when they are mixing, the nutrient productivity of the water inside an estuary will be quite high. This is the region that estuaries are known as the most productive ecosystems of the world. A lot of world population, you can say around 60% of the world population live near the coast because they are able to utilize the gains that are get, that they are getting from the respective estuaries because estuaries are mostly available near the coast. Also, you know, one important factor about estuary is that you need to compare this estuary with lagoons and backwaters. Lagoons and backwaters are seldom confused with estuary. So what is basically the difference between estuary, lagoon and backwater? Now, if you will think from a generalist perspective, there is definitely no difference between lagoons, estuaries and backwater. But yes, friends, there is a difference. Even lagoons, back, uh, this backwater and estuaries are having their subclassification. For example, if we talk about lagoons. So when we talk about lagoons, friends, lagoons are of two types. There are coastal lagoons. There are oceanic lagoons and this oceanic lagoon are also known as atolls. So basically this coastal lagoon are touching the ocean and are on the land. And this oceanic atoll is something that when a body of water is being surrounded by coral reefs or coral island, then it will become atoll lagoon. In this figure, you will be able to understand what is atoll lagoon. You can see this body of water inside friends and this body of water which you can say that it is a coral island or coral reef it is surrounding this central body of water so this is basically a perfect example of atoll lagoon and it is inside ocean not on the coast so basically there are two types of lagoons and there are some more classifications of lagoon similarly there are some more classifications of backwater and similarly there are classifications of estuary dog so from a generalist perspective if we are going to compare all of these things i will make two groups one group is estuary and one group is backwater and lagoon. Now, what's the difference? The size of estuary is quite bigger than the size of backwater and lagoon spreads. Estuary is quite big. Now, because of that, the depth of estuary is quite high. And comparatively, the depth, depth of lagoon and backwater is not that high. Okay, friends. So, the effect of things like precipitation, wind flow, Temperature is going to affect lagoons and backwaters more when compared to estuary because the size of estuary and the depth of estuary is quite bigger than lagoons and backwater. Also, friends, you need to understand that the current that is a wave action inside the estuary, it is much more stronger than what is going on inside the backwater and lagoon because backwaters and lagoons are shallow. So on the fact of that, that they are shallow, the current of lagoon and backwater is not that strong. But when estuaries, when we are talking about estuaries, estuaries are quite go, go, uh, big and they are quite, you know, they have quite some depth. So because of that, the current action in estuaries is quite strong. I hope you are able to understand this much things, friends. Now, coming back to our original topic, estuaries. Why are estuaries found? 
formed. So estuaries are formed due to many reasons. Estuaries are formed due to rise or fall of sea level. Estuaries have also been historically formed due to glacial processes. Estuaries are formed due to tectonic processes. Estuaries are formed due to movement of sandbars, you know, the sand which is found at the coast. So there are a lot of reasons and not there is no need to go into that much. Coming to what basically an estuary does. You very well know friends that human settlements are living near by estuaries and they are actually gaining a lot from estuaries. Now what exactly these human settlements are gaining from estuaries? If we talk about first thing is fishing. Fishing is the most important occupation of coastal community. We all know that it is not a rocket science. And this fishing activity is very intense in estuaries. Also, estuaries are best very good for tourism. Kerala's backwaters are famous for tourism, not only over India, it is famous all over the world. A lot of people come here, you know, to do that houseboat stay in the Kerala backwaters in Aleppo. So basically for tourism purposes, these estuaries and backwaters and lagoons are very useful. Then for navigation purposes, they are also useful. You know, people may cross big bodies of water by the help of these estuaries using some boats. So this is one more thing. Then friends, for agriculture, this is also very important. The agriculture industry has actually established themselves near these estuaries. You know, a, a lot of rice farming is going on near these estuaries. However, this rice farming is not uh, very beneficial. A lot of scientific experts have said that this rice farming near the estuaries has actually armed estuaries in a lot of ways. But not let's go into that. Coming to next, estuaries have mangroves in them. And mangroves help as first line of defense against tsunamis and wave action. You know, when the tsunami came, friends, the first line of defense which is stopped the currents, which is stopped the intensity of the tsunamis was the mangroves. These mangroves were destroyed, but they reduced the flow of the water. They reduced the flow of the wave action of the tsunami. So basically, these mangroves, which are found inside estuaries, they act as first line of defense. Also, for thousands of years near these estuaries, local people have been living. So they have their own cultural etiquettes. They have their own commercial etiquettes. So basically, those are also preserved by the means of these estuaries. Okay. Then, some other benefits of estuaries are that estuaries play a major role in groundwater recharge. You know, groundwater recharging has become the groundwater is getting depleted too quickly and uh, you can say that by maintaining the estuaries we will be able to maintain or we will be able to sustain the recharging of groundwater for some amount of time then these estuaries are habitat and breeding grounds for a lot of plants and animals their biological productivity is high the medicinal purposes is also very high friends as i have told you the Mangroves are found inside estuaries and these mangroves have plants and those plants have excellent medicinal properties. They, you know, most of those plants have already been used for treating non-communicable diseases like cancer, heart, diabetes. So basically, the medicinal purposes, the scientific purposes, the health purposes of these estuaries are also quite big. Also friends, these estuaries are a host to a lot of plants and animals. A birds like pelicans are found here, deciduous trees are found here, animals like sea turtles, sea lions, sea catfish, and uh, you know, bulrush, and there are a lot of other organisms which are found in these estuaries. So basically, you can see that the flora and fauna of these estuaries is quite big. Okay. And as I've told you that the tourism potential of these estuaries is very high. The fishing potential is high. The navigation potential is high. One big problem that these estuaries are facing is that now they have become a dumping ground for industrial waste and the civic waste. The people, the, the people who are generating waste inside their homes, that waste is making its way to the estuary. Also, the industries who are working in the coastal areas, they are dumping their waste into these estuaries. Now, one important factor about these estuaries is that these estuaries act as a filter. They act as a purifier. That is, if the water is polluted, the pollution of a water, the natural pollution of the water can be cured 
by these estuaries. Obviously, these estuaries are having mangroves and the roots of these mangroves take out the pollutants from the water. So basically, it acts as a natural filter, but it is not capable of cleaning the waste which is being emitted by the industries into it. It is not capable of cleaning the waste which is being emitted by the mankind into it. So that is why these estuaries are facing a lot of danger from industrial and civic wastage. Also, the process of dredging has become a big problem. You know, what is basically this dredging? D-R-A-D-G-I-N-G. Dredging happens, friends, in the harbors. You know, in the harbors, big ships come and they dock. The loading, the unloading and loading process takes place and then again it goes. So basically, these big ships need a lot of depth because as they are big, they are going to displace a whole lot of water. So basically, they need some depth to stand. Now, in order to create those depth, the surface of that particular water body, which is inside the water, that is being cleaned. Suppose this is a water body. The ship is standing here. This is the land. So here, many times, many silt and minerals are deposited. So what they do, the people do that they take big machine region, they clean up this region. So basically, this process of dredging to clear the floor bed inside the water body, this has become a menace and this is creating a lot of problem, friends. And it is destroying a lot of estuary ecosystems. So this dredging problem is also creating a problem, friends. The shipping industry as a whole is creating a problem. A lot of mining and industries is going on in the coastal areas. That mining is also creating the problem for these estuaries. So the problems associated with these estuaries, I have discussed a lot, friends. And what these estuaries are useful for, that I have also discussed. I have made this video from a generalized perspective, friends. Not many particular examples have been included by me. I just want to know you, tell you that what basically these estuaries ecosystems are and, are and how they are different from lagoons and backwaters. However, exact differences of estuaries from lagoon and backwaters cannot be done because there are many lagoons which are quite big and there are many estuaries which are quite small. So basically in that case, this logic will go away that estuaries are big and mango and these uh, lagoons and backwaters are small. But in a generalized perspective, estuaries are quite big and the lagoons and backwaters are not that big. So I hope this video was helpful for you friends. If this video was really helpful for you, you can like this video. You can comment on this video and tell me that how you are liking this video friends. You can also subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on Instagram friends and there you can message me. You can talk to me friends. And I will just request you to share these videos on your social media profiles because if you are going to do that, I will be able to benefit some amount of views. And trust me, friends, these views and subscribers are a big boon. You know, they only encourage me to do a lot of, to make a lot of more videos, good quality videos. So thank you for watching, friends. Have a great day. If you have some suggestions, you can leave in the comment box below. Goodbye.